Collect the data. Let me see. I've got that. Yeah, right there. I've got that. Wait, wait. Is the... Ah, here we go. I knew it was here somewhere. Ta-da! A fishing net. Check. What are you doing? Getting ready for a scientific expedition. Double check my checklist with me, will you, please? Sure. Notebook? Check. Pens and pencils? Check. Hip boots? Oh, yeah. Hip boots? Check. Going waiting? Sometimes it's important to study animals in their natural environments. You mean find them where they really live? Well, yes, but scientists do field work all the time, and it can take them to some very interesting places. Hmm. Okay, okay, we got the flashlight. flashlight. Okay. Robin's going on a scientific expedition deep into the woods of northern Minnesota. The signal has been coming from this one spot for several months now. So we think it's spending the winter right here. But it's so far in there, we're gonna, it's going to take us all day. It's worth it, Lynn, because really there's no other place we can do a study like this, and we've just got to get in there. Dr. Lynn Rogers, a field biologist for the U.S. Forestry Service and an expert on black bears. And Dr. Ralph Nelson, medical doctor and a leading nutritionist. I was here to see how scientists from two completely different areas of interest get together and share their knowledge to help people. Do you think this is going to be very dangerous? Well, it can be dangerous because they're big animals and uh, that... You know, that always means they have power, they, they have big teeth, and uh, so we're always real cautious. This is real dense wood, so we couldn't see what was going on on the ground. This is quite a ways from any road or anything, so it's going to take all day for us to get there. It'll take snowmobiles to get in the vicinity and then snowshoes through the woods. Receiver. What's this for? There, there's a radio on it. It's just like a little radio station. Uh -huh. This is our receiver to pick up the signal. And then this antenna is directional. Keep turning. Okay. How's that? That's getting stronger. That's getting stronger. A little bit more. That that sounds good. Okay, let's see what where is that? How far do you think that is then? Oh, I guess two or three miles yet. Uh -huh. Dr. Rogers is going to give the bear a tranquilizer so we can get close. Are you scared? I just try not to wake him up.
bears right near the entrance, but I think the drug is taking effect. Good. Okay. Uh, let's clear some of the snow away. Show some coordinated. Yeah. Some Dr. Rogers, why are you taking the bear's blood? Uh, a bear is a mammal just like we are. And it's a warm blooded animal. Uh, its body is much like ours. But what's interesting about a bear is that in the winter it can uh, it can go for six months without urinating, defecating, eating or drinking. Mm -hmm. And um, during that time there's changes that occur in their bodies that are something like happened in people during some illnesses. I had no idea that you could take blood samples from a bear and it could apply to a human in some way. Uh, we think that they'll have application our studies and other studies to uh, treatment of people with severe burns, mm -hmm. people with obesity, people with kidney disease, even anorexia nervosa we see a, a factor because the bear has no appetite at all during this time even though it hasn't eaten for seven months. That's really incredible. Back at the lab, the blood is prepared for important research. Dr. Nelson is going to find ways to help kidney patients. I'll take this uh, serum. The clear part is called the serum, and that's what scientists study in their laboratories. And someday their results could help you and me. Right? Right. Right. It was nice to have you along, too. Well, I'm glad <laughs> I could help. Camera? Check. Film? Check. Thermometer? Z, why do you need a thermometer? To measure the water temperature. Oh, it's so you can be in the water. Won't you need some scuba gear or something? No, not this trip. Dipper. Collection bottles. Okay, Z, okay, that's fine. Don't tell me. I might be gone for a while. Maybe I should pack a lunch. Hmm. <sighs> To study this fish, the parrotfish, you have to go on an underwater expedition. Parrotfish eat a kind of underwater plant called algae that grows on coral reefs. So to find a parrotfish in its natural environment, you have to go to a reef, like the reefs around the island of Bonaire in the Caribbean. Todd's there visiting biologist Jules Van Roy, who studies parrotfish and reefs. And that's why we're studying it. I don't know if you ever saw parrotfish in the water. Sure, I've seen them eating the coral, biting at the coral. Well, that's right, they bite at the coral, but they don't eat the coral. It's important to know, that's why we're studying it. They don't eat the coral, they eat the algae that are growing on the surface of the coral. The coral reef is a structure built by animals, the corals. They build the reef, and on the reef, algae can grow, and they can grow fast. So, if there weren't any parrotfish in the water to keep the algae down, they would overgrow the reef and the reef would die. So that's why we think parrotfish are very important to maintain the health of a coral reef system. They're called parrotfish because of their beak. If you look at them, you see right. that they have a beak like a real parrot. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's made like that so that it can scrape very efficiently the limestone. But there's still a lot we don't know about parrotfish. And Jules is spending four years in Bonaire studying them. To carry on his experiment, he must be able to tell the fish apart, to identify each individual fish. He's found a way to do this without having to tag the fish. The clue is in the tail. Can you see any difference between these two? Sure. I'm the right side of this fish is three full scales and two partial ones. That's right. And then compare it with the other fish. I can see that the right side of this male has only three full scales. That's right. When I see a fish in the water, I draw the yellow spots. And then later when I come to the surface, I can look it up in this book and then say, so it was this fish. And so their tail prints are comparable to our fingerprints. Yeah, that's right. You could put it that way. A parrotfish hangs out in the same area all its adult life. 
This makes it easier for Jules to study the habits of a particular fish. Once we find a parrotfish, we follow it around to see where it goes. When the fish turns around, Jules and I place a marker on that spot. We keep following the fish, placing more markers. We've now marked the boundary of this fish's territory. Our next job is to watch what the fish does and record it. To do that, we need a special tool. The special tool that Jules uses is an underwater computer. Okay, computer. Yep. I'll be right in. With a computer, we can record all the information we need. By pressing the keys on the computer, we record what the fish is doing and how often it does it. This is much faster and easier than jotting down notes underwater, especially when you want to keep your eyes on the fish. By recording its movements, Jules can figure out how much energy the parrotfish uses. The parrotfish gets its energy from the food it eats, algae. The more energy it uses, the more food it needs. With this information, Jules can tell how many parrotfish can live on this reef. Okay, Steph. That ought to do it. That ought to do what? A fishing net, hip boots, a thermometer, collection bottles, and a box lunch. Where are you going and what are you going to do there? I'm going to the pond. All this to go out behind the garage? I need all this stuff to collect data about frogs. Data about frogs? But you've got a frog right here. Actually, Bob is what got me interested in all this. I've been reading about frogs, and there's some things I want to check out. But why not use Bob? He's right here. But Bob's not a wild frog. He spent his whole life with me. To find out about what frogs really do, where they live, what they eat, how they spend their time, I've got to go where the wild frogs are. The pond. The pond. Wait, Z, I'll go with you. Did you pack enough lunch for two? A scientific expedition can take you deep into the woods, deep underwater, or deep into your own backyard. If you want to take blood from a hibernating bear or keep track of everything a parrotfish does in a day, you have to go where they are their natural environment. 3 to one Classroom Contact is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.